Researchers at the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, have developed a design framework to build next generation analog computing chipsets that could be faster and require less power than the digital chips found in most electronic devices. Using their novel design framework, the team has built a prototype of an analog chipset called Aryabhat 1, which can be easily helpful for artificial intelligence based applications like object or speech recognition such as Alexa or Siri or those that require massive parallel computing operations at high speed. PBNS spoke to Professor Chetan Singh Thakur whose lab is leading the efforts to develop the analog chipset. He explains to us what exactly is Aryabhat 1 and how it can be helpful for artificial intelligence based applications. We are interested in building low power intelligent machines, right? And we use VLSI skill set, right? To build chips, right? So it could uh, it could be analog chips or it could be digital chips and so on, right? But in this particular case, RABAT stands for Analog Reconfigurable Technology and Bias Scalable Hardware for AI Task. So this is the, the acronyms uh, we used for RABAT, right? And here analog is, is the key point here, right? Because there are only few group in the world working on analog computing, right? So analog computing is, is interesting here. People generally use digital for computation. Generally analog is used as the periphery, right? So if you talk about any uh, system on chip or SOC, right? Or whatever is in your mobile or, or laptop, right? Uh, where we are able to communicate or we are able to see display video and everything, right? So the, all the computation is happening in the digital domain, right? Uh, but at the interface, because the world is analog, right? So you generally use analog to digital converter, digital to analog con uh, converts and so on. So there only people mainly use analog at the interface level, but people don't use analog for computation. So that's the important point here. We are using analog for computation and it has a reason why it is good for that. So Aryabhat is all about that analog computation. Can you do that? So because in engineering term or in industry, people use power performance in area, right? So you what you want, you want high performance, you want low area, right? You want low power, right? So if you are able to do that with analog, I mean, analog is perfect candidate to do that, but analog has its own disadvantages. For example, it's uh, difficult to um, scale in analog, right? And there are reasons and we'll, we'll talk about that as well. Digital is good to scale. That's what you're seeing, whatever we talk about now, uh, people are able to go from like four nanometer process people are building chips so four nanometer means smallest feature which you can build right so we are talking about there but that's mainly for digital uh, uh, technology right so here as i said in our effort basically we are using analog for computation and uh, you can literally achieve uh, you can literally achieve lowest PPA matrix, power performance in area matrix. So, so that's what uh, um, Aryabhat is all about. And uh, another point I would like to make here, ki we are mainly using for AI, AI task, right? Uh, uh, machine learning task. So analog has, uh, as I said, uh, because of, uh, um, so there's a fundamental difference between digital and analog, right? In digital, you use transistor as a switch only, right? One and zero. And in analog, the same transistor. So basic fundamental building block of all the chips are transistor, correct? But in digital, you use this as a one and zero, but in analog, that single transistor can be used for various kinds of computation. For example, it could be useful for um, exponential function, right? If you want to design any exponential function, you can use single transistor to do that. Or uh, you can also use a, a photo transistor, transistor is a, is a photo trans transconduction, right? So which is commonly used in, in image sensor, right? All these cameras, right? They use, uh, uh, there is as a, uh, so you can do a lot of multiple uh, function with a single transistor in, if you want to do in analog domain, right? So both are different analog and digital, it depends on what application you want to use it, right? Analog chips are more prone to noise or small variations in voltage, which can cause errors. Professor Chetan tells us all the challenges and technological hurdles they faced and overcame while designing Aryabhat 1. In digital, you use the same transistor for just as a switch, right? So if you press the switch, right, it becomes one. If you remove the switch, it becomes zero, right? But in analog, 
as I said, right? If you apply switch means you apply voltage and if you different voltage, you can see different current. So you have a whole range of signal, right? So even a tiny uh, noise, which is coming from external world, it could affect your actual signal, right? So it will affect that, right? So that's true, uh, that happens. Uh, but here, as I said, Aryabhat is mainly designed for AI and machine learning tasks, right? The advantage here is uh, it's more on the learning paradigm. Even if you have a noise, you can compensate those noise through the learning process. It's not like in typical computation, let's say you want to do two multiplication, right? You, you already do your algorithm and you deploy that in the chip, right? But here, like in human, right? We are not uh, uh, kind of already pre-programmed. We learn based from the environment, right? Correct? Based on the feedback, based on the what person is saying, we keep updating our um, uh, parameter, I would say, or synaptic strength in our brain. So in our brain, we have kind of 100 trillion synapses. It's it's constantly changing, right? Based on how you interact with the environment. So it's more like a data-driven approach. You learn from the environment. Same here, it's more like a learning uh, paradigm. So whatever the noise which you have, which you know, it could be correlated noise or uncorrelated noise, right? So you said the noise. So there could be fluctuation in the power supply. That's more like that will affect the all nodes of your chip, right? So it's more like a correlated noise, which you can compensate by the learning process. So it's more like a data driven. So that's what we we, we will be able to do that here in, in the Aribut uh, chip. And another point I would like to make here, why analog is good for AI and ML? Because, uh, um, as, because I was mentioning about the human brain, right? Uh, human brain is, is highly variable. We have a kind of 100 billion neurons and no, not as two neurons are same. All are different because it's a physical thing there, right? Because of the physical process, all neurons are different. Same thing here, when you're building chips, no two transistors are same because of the mismatch, because you have to draw through the lithography process onto the silicon and whatever you do, even if you put two transistors side by side with the same dimension, it won't be exactly the same, right? So this, this is the big problem there. It's a mismatch. And this is the biggest problem in, in analog circuit design as well, right? So, but as I said, it's a more like a learning paradigm, which you can overcome by the learning process, right? So we are developing a lot of learning algorithm, mainly for hardware, right? And another point is important here in analog computing. Uh, as we are targeting more like a perceptual task or cognitive task, right? Which is in the end, it's more qualitative in nature. In the end, you want to know, okay, whether, okay, you are Anuradha, I know by face. So it's more like a face recognition task. I don't need to compute very high precision numbers. I don't need to crunch big numbers to do that. It's more like a, um, finally I have to do, take the decision key. Oh, uh, this is person X, this person Y and so on. Or, or I can recognize the sound or speech, what a person is talking about, right? Like a speaker recognition, right? So these are more like a qualitative in nature rather than the big precision task, uh, which normal computers does, right? In, in daily um, uh, usage, right? So, and so whenever you need low precision, generally less than eight bits, right? Analog computation outperforms any digital computation. You can reach to the fundamental limit of computation if you want to do with analog. So another example I will give, uh, if you want to multiply two numbers, right? Let's say eight bit number. Generally you require 10,000 to 20,000 gates or 20,000 transistors. Here, the same thing you can do with three or four transistors. So that's the number of, we are talking about in terms of uh, optimality. But yes. again, the accuracy would be much, much better in digital, but we are talking about, we don't need much accuracy. We just need a more qualitative answer in the end. So for that, it is perfect. If you want to do more like a perceptual task, analog computing is perfect. Yes, uh, Professor Chetan, one, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yes, it, 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 analog computing, as you have said, it is more cognitive, so it must be a little bit hard. Uh, one key thing that I, uh, that I think is more important, very important here is, which is the energy, energy efficiency part of uh, analog computing. If you could stress more on that, how is it uh, good for power, how it uh, reduces the power consumption, or is it good for high, high speed functioning? Yeah, yeah, so, as I said, right, um, to do two multiplication, two number multiplication, right? You require tens thousands transistor, right? Ten thousand to so fifteen thousand transistor. Here you are require you require only um, four to five transistor, right? More or less, right? And each transistor requires some power supply, right? So imagine 
the the energy efficiency you can directly get it here because you have less number of uh, elements to to compute the same thing right right so in case you don't need high precision analog computation is good for for that purpose right another advantage or key feature in um, in arabat um, is bias scalable right so for example in uh, in digital computer typical digital computer we talk about gigahertz of clock speed right that your processor has gigahertz or running at gigahertz or 2 gigahertz and so on right and if you want to increase the performance people are pushing the this clock frequency right uh, and if you want to reduce the power you can reduce the clock frequencies and so on there is no such thing in uh, in analog as such uh, between the uh, power and speed trade off so if you run at high clock frequency in digital you require more power okay uh, and if you are low clock frequency then the lower power similar if you do in in analog right one transistor is a physical device right so if you it has a different mode of operation so for example if you want to if you run in those who are those who have transistor background they are aware that there are three main operating region of a transistor is one is strong inversion one is mid inversion one is weak inversion right so if you want to have better performance people push your transistor into strong inversion right but you have to design mainly in a strong inversion once you have designed in that particular mode you can't come back to the other operating region because the device physics changes okay and if you want low power people generally design in weak inversion region where uh, the performance or the speed is lower but you can literally go like a uh, nano watts of power uh, so generally it's not that easy here uh, so that's what i'm calling our rare but also support bias scalability by changing the bias current you can move in different operating region and that's another unique feature we have so these are the major hurdles uh, in typical analog computing you have which we are trying to solve here one is the process scalable one is the bias scalable so process scalable another is a big big problem which i think this would be the first process scalable uh, design um, because let's see uh, for example i'm comparing here with digital because in digital you work at little higher abstraction level right you write some high level code and it will synthesize uh, to do that computation correct now it doesn't matter the same code would work in 180 nanometer process same code will work in 90 nanometer process uh, you have to do little tweak here and there and then uh, the same code probably would work in lower and lower process technology but in analog if you design in 180 nanometer if you want to come to the lower process again engineer has to set design completely new transistor because the transistor has changed the process has changed right so you have to do custom layout so here the layout is also like custom you have to draw literally you have to draw the transistors and build the whole thing right uh, which is not the case in digital digital is more like a automated flow and that's what you are able to scale like a billions of transistor here so same idea here is can you do analog is a synthesizable manner similar to digital and that's what you can scale it here so this these are some of the innovations and features of our but is uh, which is unique i feel and i think it has a lot of potential uh, in that sense india is currently working to make itself a semiconductor manufacturing hub while meeting the domestic demand we ask professor chetan can arbhat one potentially help india limit the import of chips from abroad while creating a unique design at home here actually if you see uh india uh indian engineers are always in demand if you see there are at least 50 companies or design house sir in india you just name any big companies in say in uh, in chip design they are here right so you name it intel texas instruments qualcomm everyone has design houses here right so we are very good at design and i think we should push in that direction because we are good at in, in architectural designs and so on even if we are little bit behind in the manufacturing side because uh, even for example qualcomm is a completely fabless company right but so it's a big big uh, market share it has right now in terms of soc or in terms of multimedia processor right and it's a completely fabless right it doesn't have any fab it just outsource that to like tsmcs and global foundries and so on so, right so as we, as I, as we say right uh, we have achieved significant uh, Uh, leap in the area of software engineering right we have a lot of software everybody appreciate that same if you can take the leap in in the direction of vlsi designs 
because for that you don't need much uh, in terms of big capital uh, even of course we should have our own manufacturing hub but we can't compete because already we are behind but we can still cope up in the design houses right we can have our own architecture our own design which which runs on ip so we can generate our own ips right so qualcomm is is all ip based companies right they don't uh, manufacture design so similar are but you can say it's a in house design uh, here and that could be useful for any application where you need uh, uh, micro watts of uh, power right so this is perfect for iot application so i would say there would be a significant almost like a 27 to 30 billion um uh, dollar market for iot in future right and then everywhere people are talking about edge computing right so in edge computing basically you need um computation directly at the sensor node rather than sending the data to the cloud and then cloud compute it so can you do it locally so there an area but with shine because there you need a the the constraints power constraints are very very significant right you don't want to run the battery um, um i mean for for few hours you want it to run for longer time right so being an analog you can literally go to like a nanowatts of power or microwatts of power here and run the ai on that so that's the key and it could be significant in that sense what is the future of aryabhat 1 professor chetan calls for industry support to take the design forward for commercialization analog design takes time it took almost like 3 to 4 years to come to that stage it's like uh, building a whole soc in house where uh, if you want to build the same design in industry it will probably would take 500 to 1000 engineers and with a lot of money is and but at least we have designed a prototype now we need probably we need industry support to scale it up if you want to scale it up because currently we have taped out in 180 nanometer process because in being in academia you can afford you can't afford process like 7 nanometers and so on right uh, so the the next target would be can we go to the lower process and demonstrate yeah still your analog can works in like 7 nanometer process or 4 nanometer process so that would be the first task if you want to go into the commercial route we want to have those kind of uh, effort and then uh, uh, another uh, vector which we are also exploring to use because you won't find it's more like a um, um, programmable architecture so in digital you will see field programmable gate array fpgas are there right it's more like a commodity so people now can buy in 10000 rupees or 5000 rupees and and play at their home and learn the whole digital architecture to build similar ideas can we use are but more in the education sector we want to give to people and let them play with it and let them develop the solution around that so it's more like a field programmable analog array so there's another uh, on the education side of we want to take it uh, uh, forward uh, about this are but because in analog computing is there's no as such uh, a platform available where you can play with analog computation so that would be another vector we want to try it out okay so is are you getting any kind of any kind of government support in terms of funding or bringing the industry competitors to take your product and prototype and scale it for in the future is there anything so there's the plan such? there's the plan uh, yeah there's the plan uh, still i will, we have to do a lot of testing uh, so once our testing and everything is done then uh, the idea is to take it to the next level maybe commercialization uh, through isc route or through our student those who have developed uh, from the team um so that's the idea uh, in the next uh, probably uh, by next year we want to try that out as well and now government has a lot of push in the area of this uh, uh, chip to startup program and lot of push into, into this semiconductor mission right this ism is there right the india semiconductor mission so a lot of push in fact so it's, it's the right time and we will want to explore that and uh, maybe the next uh, probably will will up, will go for chip to startup program or commercialization route of it Thank you for watching. Stay tuned with PBNS for more updates on technological breakthroughs of India.